Minnesota Vikings now and uh, talked earlier about some run and pass reads and keys for the secondary guys. Uh, my second topic is going to be daily drills for defensive backs. And uh, we had a little discussion down here in, in the break of, of how to utilize your individual period. And uh, as the season goes on, it's always your, your individual time that gets kind of screwed up. The head coach squeezes practice down on you and you've got a lot more things that you've got to cover and you end up cutting down on your individual period all the time. I see all the assistants nodding their head and all the head coaches are saying, no, that's not the case. But um, it is your individual time to suffer. So you want to think of how you can do things in a crisp, quick way and get a lot of skills worked on uh, at, at the same time. And you know that you're always going to be under a time constraint. And the first thing you have to think about is, uh, What's the purpose of your drill work? Okay, what are you trying to accomplish when you end up working on your drills? Um, most of the time, your players, they think that you're trying to punish them when you, you got drills for them to do, or they think it's uh, something that uh, you're just trying to be a, a bad guy. But you know that you've got some skills that you need to get worked on. And they can't always be practiced in a team setting, or you're not going to get everything done in the plays that you have in practice. So you want to be able to uh, structure some drills for your individual time. You also want to be able to structure some drills for off-season work, where it might be the summer, uh, where you're not with the guys, and you want them to be able to work on some things that can help them and increase their skills when the coach is not around. Okay. You want to become proficient at the skills that you're going to use in the game. And this is probably the most important thing. When I talk to people about drills, I can say, hey, I can show you all the drills that I use and every drill that I know, and it might not be relevant to what you do. We guys, we're talking about options, and we're talking a little bit about Canadian football down here, and they, they threw some problems at me that I had never seen before. So things that I have the answer for might not be uh, pertinent to what you're doing. So you have to really analyze and look and say, what are the things that my guys actually need to do in the game? That's what I'm going to show you seven drills that I do uh, just about every day with my guys. And the way I developed those drills and I came to them is I really analyzed all the film that, that, uh, that I had from our games. And I saw seven different movements or skills that we were doing all the time. And that's, what it, that's how I develop my drills. So I think that's one thing you always have to keep in mind. What do my guys do? What do my defensive backs have to do? And then I want to structure some drills that will get them to be able to do that. Okay. You want to uh, get better at your weaknesses. If you've got guys that don't do a certain thing very well, you want to make sure you work on that. But at the same time, you don't want to ignore the things that you do all the time. So there may be. Um, some things that, hey, my guys aren't very good at, that I want to get some drills and get them worked on, but still don't ignore the things that you do all the time. You want to make some reactions of your players second nature. You, uh, this is another area that you really want to stress in your drills. If we talked about some of the reads that we had from earlier on, how can I set up a drill so I can get the guy to make a one-step reaction if that's what I want? but I only have four or five plays in practice where he's going to be in there to work on that. I've got to get a drill going where I can simulate exactly what he's going to see, simulate his reaction, and get him to where he's doing it all the time. Okay. Um, determining what you need to work on. It doesn't really make sense, as I said before, to set up some drills and do them and work on things that you're never going to work on. I can give you some great bump and run man-to-man -man drills, but if you don't play bump and run and your guys aren't going to do that and play man-to-man, -man, it's really not going to help you and not going to be an efficient use of your time. So you, you really have to be careful in determining what you're going to work on. Uh, what are your players asked to do? Put them in those situations. Uh, how can you set those situations up and save your practice time? Um, and, and, and again, you may be 
just a little bit different from me. Um, I do a lot of tackling drills because I expect my guys to tackle. There are some coaches in the NFL. Um, matter of fact, there was a friend of mine who worked for the, the Raiders, and uh, Al Davis told him he was going to fire him if he got one of his corners hurt in tackling drills. He said, if I get one of my corners hurt, I want him hurt covering somebody. So it, it really depends on what they're going to be asked to do as to the drills you want to get done. Okay. I break my drills down into three areas. Okay. I have footwork and agility drills, which I'll start with first. And I call these line drills. And that's how my guys will know. I'll say, hey, we're going to do our line drills now. And the reason I call them that, everything in football is based on angles. Okay. And it's basically straight lines, 45 degree angles. We've heard from the time you're a little, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And that's what I'm trying to teach to all my guys. We're going to get going on a straight line. So I am going to consequently work that line to make sure as I'm watching that we are going straight and we're not wasting steps. So I'm going to work most of the time on my line drills across the field. I'm going to pick out a yard line, and I'm going to be right here on the sideline, and I'm going to start them here. We're going to start from here, and they're going to work straight back. So they're working right on the yard line, and then we're going to do some things to come off that line. But I want to make sure that we're going at sharp angles. We're not rounding things off. The first thing we're going to do is what I call turn and go. And I'll show you. I have a film on all of these drills. But it's basically the first skill that a guy has to have. We're going to backpedal. We're going to go straight on the line. And I'm going to be looking right at the defensive back. And I'm going to turn the ball right or left. Okay? And what he's going to do then now is turn and sprint for the opposite sideline. But he's going to try to stay right on that line and not have any false steps. So as I'm working back across the line and I turn the ball this way, he's going to open his hips, take one 45 step here, and a second step. I want to see if he can get his hips around and get right on that line and take the shortest distance to the goal line. Okay? And it's a good drill. We do it in scouting because I want to see if a guy can, has the hip flexibility to open all the way around 180 degrees and not come off the line. Invariably, you'll have guys who don't have the flexibility you're looking for to take the one step here, the second step is here, and then they end up getting back on the line. But if you work with them enough, you can work with it and get them to open their hips quick enough so they don't waste any time and they get going right in that direction you want to go, right down the line. Okay, the second drill is a 45 degree angles. Okay, I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to backpedal right on that line. I'm going to turn the ball right or left for them, but now they're going to come back and break back at a 45 degree angle towards me. Okay. So the defensive back would be backpedaling. If I break the ball this way, I'm going to want him to stop, turn his foot again at a 45 degree angle, plant, stop himself with this foot, and end up driving off this foot. And we always talk about plant and recovery, OK? And the reason we do that, it is too difficult, especially if you're in bad footing, to plant and recover and start to drive off the same foot. That's when you'll see the guy slip. If I want to plant this foot and put all my weight here and then burst off that foot the same way, invariably, if you don't have the good footing, you're going to end up sliding this foot out. You're going to end up slipping. Okay? And what we try to do is we try to plant, stop yourself here, shift your weight, and end up now driving off the opposite foot. And I always want the guys coming at a 45 degree angle because I tell them, hey, the good receivers, the guys that you have to cover, they're trained to come back for the ball, OK? So as that receiver runs his route, the poor receiver may drift this way, OK, and give you a chance to go at a 90 degree angle. But the good receiver is always going to end up coming back to the quarterback. So as I make my break, if I break at a 90, all I'm going to do is let him come back for the ball and then come up and make the tackle. If I'm ever going for an interception point or a point to cut him off, I'm going to have to come back this way. So I'm always working at a 45 degree angle back towards the quarterback. I'm never working at a 90. That's the second drill I'm going to do. Okay. 
Okay, the third thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work straight down the line. I'm gonna turn my hips like I'm opening up to the goal post on the go route, and then I'm gonna come straight forward. And the way I do this drill is I'm, I'm here with them. I point them straight back on their back pedal, turn the ball right or left. I want them to open straight on the line again, and then I bring it straight back. So what the, the, the defensive back will do, he'll back pedal. When I turn the ball, he's gonna open up again, open those hips and start his turn, but he's gotta keep his vision on me. And now when I bring the ball up, he's gotta again stop, plant himself, stop himself with one foot, get his recovery and drive off the opposite foot and come straight back on the line. And what that simulates is the receiver who's taught to burst on that defensive back, break his cushion down, get him to turn, and then run your hook route, okay? And get that guy to turn and now come back to the ball where I've got to come straight back. Okay. And again, guys who aren't used to it, uh, and when we first start with a lot of the rookies, they'll end up trying to stop and plant and drive off the back foot, and that's when they end up slipping. And they've got to stop, plant, drop their weight again, get it over the front foot, turn your toe towards your target, and come straight back. Okay, I don't want to see them end up planting, rounding it off. I want to see the sharp angles coming straight back to the ball. Okay, okay. then off that same movement, I'm going to end up driving back at a 45 degree angle inside or to the same side that I turned. Okay, again, it starts out the same way. I'm going to back pedal them. They're going to turn and open up going deep, again keeping their vision on me, but now I'm going to make them plant and drive back at a 45 degree angle. Okay. Again, this is where the receiver sells you on the deep route. He gets you to turn and open up your hips. Okay. Now he breaks it off and runs an in route, okay. where I've got to now again plant and come back towards him. Okay. okay number five is the same thing. Okay. I'm going to back pedal, I'm going to turn and open up, okay. I'm going to stop myself, now I've got to open my hips, plant and drive at 45 degree angles the other way. Okay. Okay. The sixth drill is what I call the flag wheel where I'm going to start, I'm going to take the guy straight back, I'm going to break him in towards the post and then I'm going to make him wheel all the way back around, uh, center fielder's turn. So I'm going to start back working still on the same line, okay? I'm going to start into the post, okay? open up at a 45 degree angle, go hard. I'm going to make the guy go hard until I get him actually giving me the speed that I want inside, not cheat the drill. Then I'm going to flip the ball around. I'm going to make him plant off his inside foot and wheel all the way back around to the flag. We get that a lot in man-to-man -man coverage where they'll try to sell us one way, get us to come back around, also happens in zone coverage as well. And then the last drill, seventh drill, is the rotation drill. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is really basically for playing cover two, but we get it in some other situations too. I'm gonna be over here, I'm gonna have the defensive back just start in a square position, simulating that he's got a receiver here. And we're going to simulate that the receiver takes an outside release and I'm just going to shuffle, shuffle, simulate putting my hands on him, opening up and getting my vision to the quarterback. Okay, as I go back, I'm the quarterback there. I'm going to loft the ball up and let him go up and play it as if the receiver is trying to run a fade. Or after he goes, okay, then I'm going to turn my shoulders to the sideline and say I hit my flare back. I'm going to make him drop his hips again, plant and react up to the ball. Okay. Then I'll normally take them to the other side of the field and we'll do the same thing off an inside release. But we'll say, hey, now the receiver released inside, so you gotta shuffle down, simulate, jamming him to the inside, and then push off and go at your 45 degree angle back to protect against your flag route. And those seven drills, I'll do them in combination. I obviously can't do them all. Uh, usually in a 10 minute individual period, but I'll make sure I hit these drills at least twice a week and I'll mix them up the way I hit them. But these are my basic agility and footwork drills that I'll do with the, the defensive back 
and it really does a couple of things. It gets them warmed up, it lets them work on the seven skills that we use a lot. I mean, all of my defensive backs are gonna use these turns uh, all over the field. So they get work on what we're gonna do, and then I also use them as ball drills. If I have a long individual period, I'll do them one at a time, and I'll throw the ball to them so we can get our agility and footwork. We also get some work catching the ball. Once the season starts and I get cut down on my individual period, then I may have to go two at a time. And I'll go two guys at a time and only throw the ball to one of them. Or I might have to take the whole group at the same time if I'm really cut down and have seven guys going at the same time so we get to work on the footwork and we don't get to work on the ball drills but this is something that I want to do every day because these are the skills that we're going to use. Okay, the second section is what I call uh, buddy drills, and that's how I refer to them with my guys, and they're really for specific skill development, okay? So we'll pair up. Question. Uh, depends on what, how much time I have. Usually I try to go twice through. So if I'm going to work on, say I'm going to work on my 45s, I'm going to do them one each way. So I'm going to get each guy twice if I have time. Um, and I might, if I'm in two a days, I may, out of those seven drills, I may do four in the morning, once each way. And then I'll do the other three in the afternoon, you know, depending on how much time I have. But I try to map it out and I'll kind of cover that at the end when I put this all together of how you try to map it out. But those Agility drills are something that I want to hit at least three of them every practice because that's what we're all about as defensive backs is that agility and movement. Okay, my, uh, my buddy drills, the first thing we'll do is tackling. And you would be amazed, you would think, well, you get guys to this level, uh, professional football, that sh you, know, you wouldn't have to do that many tackling drills. I probably do more tackling drills uh, especially in training camp than anything else that I do because I want to emphasize getting in the right position, doing things the right way, hitting with the top of my shoulder pads, and uh, continuing to use my leg drive. And I do basically three uh, tackling drills, head-on tackle, angle tackle, and open field. And what I'll do, especially early in training camp, I'll start the guys one yard away. And I'll say, we've already gotten in position. We've done everything. We're just at the strike point now. And I'm going to step away. And all I want to do is hit off my right foot and my right shoulder. I'm going to take one step. I'm going to hit the man, make contact with the top of my shoulder pads. Okay, I'm going to follow through with my legs, wrap with my arms, and carry him back five yards. And I'll do that right shoulder, left shoulder. And we'll just go right down the line. I'll pair him up in twos and I'll have this side be the tacklers and they're hitting one right after another, come back, do it with the left shoulder, then turn the lines around and have them hit the same way. Then I'll back them up to five yards where we're gonna do the same thing, but now they've gotta take their approach, break down and hit and drive the same way. Okay. We'll go right shoulder, left shoulder. And then I'll do it on an angle, 45 degree angle again. I have the runner five yards away from the defender. Runner starts, I wanna let him get a little bit in front of me. I'm gonna now come take my approach and I'm gonna hit off the angle, get my head in front, hit with my inside shoulder, wrap, square him up and take him back five yards. I'll do that both ways. And then what I call open field is I just move the lines 15 yards apart. I'm gonna have the runner come at the defender the same way. I'm going to come at him, continue to come, break down. I don't let the, the runner make a move. He just angles when he gets about four yards away from him, one way or the other. So we have to do it on the move. And I'll probably do that one day a week. I'll do that so that each guy gets six tackles. And that takes me about, if I've got eight guys, that may take my whole individual period some days. But I want to make sure that we're in the mental frame of mind of hitting and that physically we're geared up to do it, do it right because I have to do that more so in the pros because once we get into team situations, we can't uh, slam Eric Dickerson down and tackle him the million dollar back. The owner gets upset, so we have to tackle each other. 
Okay, second section on this is block protection, okay? And I'll do it the same as tackling. Pair the guys up, we'll break off into two lines, and now I'm gonna have one guy simulate being the lead blocker. Okay, he's gonna come at me. I'm gonna keep my outside arm and leg free. Okay, I'm gonna hit with my shoulder pad, try to get a, a rising blow on the blocker, and come off and be in position to make the play. And I'm gonna do that left shoulder and right shoulder. I'm gonna have the guys come aggressively, the run, uh, the blockers come 100 miles an hour, and I'm gonna make sure I get my shoulder pads lower than his pads, get a little rising blow on him, and I wanna uh, use my legs to come off and be in position. Okay, then I'm gonna go to cut blocks. And uh, every place I've been, the coaches have let me do this. I think it's important. You always worry about getting people hurt, but I've found that I, uh, I have less trouble with getting guys hurt in the games and getting them cut in the games if they know how to defend themselves. And the only way you can work on it is by working on it. And so what I'll do is I'll say, hey, and this is the drill. We're gonna cut, everybody's gonna cut. I'm gonna have the runner come and try to get to your outside leg. You know he's gonna cut you. So I've gotta get in a low position and I'm gonna play it with my hands. I see this helmet go down. I'm gonna take his hands and end up uh, trying to stuff his helmet, turn his helmet away from me and still keep my outside arm and leg free. Okay, I've got some guys that don't like to play it with their hands, they would rather play it with the flipper, which is fine. I'll say, okay, you know he's gonna cut you, keep your legs bent, outside arm and leg, take it on, keep it free and give a little ground. And the key thing to doing it, and I've convinced most of the guys every place I've been, if you bend your legs, bend your knees, and give a, be ready to give ground, you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna get hurt and you're gonna be able to make the play. Guys who are gonna get hurt is guys who don't bend their knees or they try to get out of the way from it, okay? If you take on the block first, defeat the block with your legs bent, even if the guy does cut you, you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna get hurt. We don't wanna get cut, but you won't get hurt. But if you end up trying to avoid it, or you don't know how to play it, that's when you're gonna have problems. And we work on that. We cut each other probably once every other week uh, when the season is going on, and we probably do it, I do it three times a week during training camp. And we get the guys where you don't have a problem with the cut blocks, then you're not gonna see it that much. But we do that. The last thing I do is a bull in the ring, and this is probably the best run block protection drill that I do, I'm standing here as the coach. I have the defender right here facing me. Okay. Okay, there, I, there are three other guys with him. Okay, excuse me, actually he is facing away from me. So he's looking that way, okay. He's got man here, man here, man here, three yards apart, okay, and Basically, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point to the guys that I want to attack him and block him. And all I wanna see from this defender is really shifting his weight to take on the block, okay? He's got guys here and he's got a guy here three yards away from him. And he's gotta have peripheral vision, see who's coming, see who's gonna block him. As he gets this out of the corner of his eye, all he's gonna do is shift his weight, take it on, his shoulder pad underneath the pad of the guy who's blocking him. I'll let him hit and recover, then I'll point to the next guy, maybe from here. He's gonna take him on here. But it gets him taken on blocks, right or left, and taken on with either shoulder, and it's a drill that you can set up if you've got eight guys, you can do two groups and you can get everybody through in about uh, maybe three minutes, and give them five or six shots of taking on blocks. It gets them warmed up but it also really stresses balance and just shifting your weight to take on blocks and not have to, to really extend yourself. And uh, I got it from Chuck Nolan. It's probably the best drill that I, that I do. And I, guys have more fun with it, but they also get a lot out of it. Okay, okay then go to your rerouting drills. This is basically wide receiver. Uh, defensive back again will partner up the same thing to keep the same buddy mirror drill okay. well all I'm gonna do is a footwork drill I'm gonna be the defender my buddy's gonna be facing me a yard away 
I'm going to get in a squared up stance with my hands behind me and he's going to take me in a five yard area back and forth and all I'm going to do is stay in front of him just like a basketball player okay and I'm going to just try to stay in front of him not using my hands at all okay okay then the second time through after we both go um, once on offense once on defense I'm going to let the guy the defender use his hands I'm going to stay square I'm going to give the receiver a five yard area to take him back and forth when he feels like if he's got him out of position and he can beat him across the line I'm going to let him go but now that's where I want to be able to punch him and slide and stay in front and again this is a drill our guys like to do you can make it competitive um, you know see who which guy can beat each other within the five yard uh, area okay and then the release drill Again, whether I'm playing man-to-man -man or zone, I'll be right up on him, and now I'm just going to have the re receiver release outside or inside, make one move to get off the line of scrimmage, and now I'm going to end up jamming him and just running with him five yards to work on my man-to-man -man bump and run skills, whether uh, it's outside or inside release. Okay, then the last thing is... Uh, what I call finishing drills, okay? And that is, uh, number one thing is a catch-up drill, what I call it. Put the receiver here, defender four yards behind him, I'm right here as the quarterback, okay? Somehow we've gotten in this position. I'm four yards away, he starts off, I try to catch him, I'm the quarterback, I'm just gonna lay the ball out here. I want this guy not to look back, to hustle, to get in position, once he can get in position to feel him, okay, then he can look back and try to find the ball. If he sees the receiver start to make his pocket and look for the ball before he's in position to touch him, now he can't look back for the ball. Now all I can do is play his hands, wait for the ball to come in and try to punch it out, either down or up. Okay. And then the strip drill again with the same buddies. I'm here as the quarterback. Okay receiver here defender here facing me and I'll have the receiver come this way and we're only about three or four yards apart defenders one yard behind them I'll just underhand the ball into the receiver just like that and the defender now is going to come and he's got to try to punch the ball out and strip it okay and I, I really prefer coming underneath when I'm stripping because everybody in America all the receiver coaches teach the guys that when you catch the ball the first thing they do is put it away and I've had a lot of success coming underneath as they're putting it away and punching it up this way where I think if you come over the top you end up a lot of times securing the catch for them. Now I have one guy Albert Lewis that I had in Kansas City was a 6'3 guy with real long arms and he had this was a technique that he had and he came over the top and I let him stay with it because he was very effective with it um, and so guys can perfect their own little technique, but I think percentage-wise, even if it's a high throw, you have a chance, better chance if you're coming from behind, coming up because the receiver is going to eventually put the ball away. But those strip drills will do, and I'll do the catch-up drill at least once a week. Okay, conditioning drills. Conditioning drills. Uh, I like to throw deep balls as a conditioning drill and whether I'm, I do it off my flag wheel or zone rotation or many times I'll just have them turn and run but rather than just run them I want to run have them run hard and still have to take the ball at the high point um, I think that's important because number one deep balls are probably the biggest source of yardage other than the kicking game uh, that you're going to have as a defensive back. So if you become proficient at playing the deep balls, it can really help your team. Okay, fumble recoveries will do. And this has gotten to be a fun drill for the guys. We stress turnovers a lot. We're always talking turnovers. Um, I'll just end up being the runner. I'll have them chase maybe 15 yards across the field and end up just fumbling the ball. Now they've got to try to pick it up give them one scoop if you can scoop it and take it 25 yards we can get our conditioning that way you miss it on the first scoop you got to fall on it pick it up secure it and get up and run 
but it's a fun drill. Um, can get some conditioning in. Can also get some hand-eye coordination. Work and emphasize, you know, working on something that you want, which is fumble recoveries. Okay, the last thing that I'll do is pursuit angles. And again, we're blessed with a lot of different guys. We got managers and uh, all kinds of guys that kickers that we can work with, but I'll end up putting the guys in different spots, maybe four receivers. I'm the quarterback here. We put the, the four DBs out there, corner and strong safety. I'll start my drop and call out a zone coverage if it's cover three. They've got to start their drop. Then I'm going to throw the ball to one of the kickers or the managers that I've got. Everybody's got to start towards the ball, and then I'm going to have the guy go uh, really uh, in a designated way that he's going to go, but now they've got to start their pursuit angles to get there. And again, it's another way to just work on um, football skills other than just running. And I've been, have been fortunate to have coaches that will let me do those kinds of conditioning drills rather than just running gasters across the field or uh, you know, running uh, two miles or whatever. Now, the one gentleman asked about doing the drills and how you do them. Uh, I try to vary my routine in a couple of different ways. I've got some skills that I want. All, a lot of these drills teach one or two different skills and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I work on three or four different things every day but I don't want to get in the same routine of doing the same thing all the time. So my guys know when I say line drills, okay, we're going we're gonna to basically work off the line. I've got seven drills. I may do two of them in the morning, three of them in the afternoon. Okay, I've got some buddy drills that I can work on toughness. Uh, I want to mix those in, okay. Um, you can create drills. I can do my strip drill and my 45 drill together, okay. Put two guys together, okay. Have them back pedal at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna break the ball one way or the other. Now one guy becomes a defender, one guy becomes a receiver, and when he catches the ball, he's got to strip him. So there's a lot of ways you can be creative with it. Um, I always try to do a couple of up-tempo drills and then do something like bull in the ring where I can not do so much running. But try to utilize your individual period to create the tempo that you want to create, work on your weaknesses, and also kind of keep it fresh and lively for them. Okay. Okay, here's my first line drill, okay? Staying right on the line, turn. You can see those guys open their hips. Uh, I really don't. I talk about opening up the hip. I've heard people talk about throwing the elbow. I think sometimes that takes you too far around, but I talk about opening up the hip and taking my back foot and putting it straight on the line, and that, I think, does the same thing. Yeah, the only thing I didn't bring was my pointer. Our right corner down here at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see this technique used. Okay, he's got a back pedal, open up, and again, gain ground. And I think when you show guys that, hey, we're not doing these drills just to, to uh, you know, punish you, but it's stuff that you want to be proficient in the game. Again, right corner at the top, you'll see the drill in the game situation. Back pedal, he's got to open up and run straight to the goal line. And once, once you show them this, that hey, these are skills that you need to be good at your job, then they'll work harder at the drills. Okay, here's the next phase. 45 degree angle. Okay. Plant with the left foot, recover with the right foot and drive off and come back to the ball slightly. Okay, I always want to see him working back towards me on this. Okay, here's the next guy, Kevin Ross, same thing the other way. Like him to plant his right foot, stop himself, recover off the left foot, work back to the ball. Okay, here's the same thing now in a game situation. You can see the corner at the top of the screen. Okay, Albert Lewis, basically the same thing he did in the drill. Back pedal, he sees the ball thrown, he's got to plant at a 45 degree angle and go to it. 
Okay, here's the same thing in a game situation. Okay, again, corner at the top of the screen. Actually, both corners here. Okay, they're getting in routes. They do a good job of staying square. Now they got to come at a 45 degree angle and come back to the ball. And you sell them, hey, the more proficient we can get at that, the better we're going to be, the better we're going to cover. They'll work harder at the drills. Okay, here now, we're going to open up. Back pedal, open up, plant, come straight back to the ball. Again, he should never come off the line on this drill. Okay, here Kevin, it's a little bit off the line. I don't want to see this. Okay, I want him to open those hips and come straight back to me. Don't waste any movement at all, not even six inches there. Okay, here it is in practice. Guy on the slot receiver here. Okay, he's going to end up jamming him, playing him man to man. The guy's going to sell him on a deep route. He's got to plant and come straight back. It's a movement that we use all the time. Okay. Here it is in the game, corner at the top of the screen. Okay. Guy's going to sell him, he pushes off a little bit. Okay, you got to plant, drop your hips, come straight back to the ball. Okay. And, and, and again, I, I basically got my drills from just watching these films and seeing the movements that we use. Okay, here's Albert working off the line a little bit. I don't really want to see this. I'd like to see him right on the line, plant, come at a 45 degree angle towards. Okay, here's the same thing the other way. Okay, plant the back foot, drive off your front foot, work back at a 45 degree angle. Okay, there's the angle again. See the corner at this side, the bottom of the screen. Okay, he gets opened up. He's got to come at a 45 degree angle towards the ball. Okay, same thing in the game. Corner at the top of the screen. He's playing inside technique. He's going to back pedal. The receiver gets him opened up. Turn, now he's got to come back at a 45 degree angle. And you can see he's really habitized himself as far as coming back towards the quarterback. Okay. 45 degree angle away from the side you turn. Okay. Working on the line, this is the toughest one because you got to open your hips all the way up against your body. Same thing the other way. Okay. Plant left foot, drive off the right foot. Okay. okay, the guy who's covering the slot man at the top of the, the screen, it happens to be a zone concept, but the quarterback looks him outside, he starts that way, now he's got to open up a 45 degree angle away from him. Again, a movement that we use quite a bit. Okay, you'll see that in a game situation now, Albert Lewis is covering man to man at the top of the screen, guy's going to start him outside. Gets his hips open, and now he's got to open up and come back to the ball away from the, the way his hips were turned. Okay, flag wheel. Just start back, back pedal, get going towards the post, plant, open up, wheel. Okay, here's the same thing, next man. Flag, start to the post, wheel to the flag. Take it at the high point. Rather not see him catch it like this, I want to see him go up and get it over top of his head on all the deep routes. Okay, here's the situation in the left corner here at the bottom of the screen. He's going to get the flag route from the wide receiver. There it is, he starts into the post, start in and wheel. <coughs> Same thing in the game situation, corner at the bottom of the screen here. He's going to get a flag route from the wide receiver. Okay. Starts him inside, he's got a wheel, come back and find the ball. Okay. Zone rotation drill, simulating cover two, jamming the, the outside release, start with depth, play the ball at the highest point. Okay. Start with depth, now my shoulders turn, he's got to break up on the flat route. 
and we would do the same thing with an inside release. Okay. Corner at the top of the screen, plan cover two. Okay, funnel. Again, start with depth and then find the ball. Okay. This is going to be the same situation off an inside release, though. Wide receiver starts inside, corner at the top, he's got a funnel, start back. Now the quarterback's shoulders turn to the sideline. Now he's got to plan up and drive on it. So again, you're trying to simulate that movement in cover two. Okay. Here it is in the game situation, corner down here, the right corner at the bottom of the screen, he gets an inside release, plant, there's his 45 degree turn away from his body again. Come up and make the hit. Okay, here's the catch up drill. Okay. One receiver's got about a four yard head start. Guy does a, Albert does a good job here of closing, getting to a position where he can touch him before he looks back for the ball. Okay, next man. Now this is a young guy, okay, doing the drill. He ends up making the play here, but he's wrong because a good quarterback's not gonna underthrow this. He can't look back this quick, but this is the habit most young guys will have and they'll do it in the game, is they'll end up looking back for the ball when they're not in position. Okay, here's a guy who does the same thing. Another rookie. Look back for the ball too quick. Okay, I don't like that, but I do like him finishing it stripping. Okay, now here's Kevin Ross. He's been a veteran. He's been with me three years. He knows the drill. Hustle, get in position, and then try to force it out. Corner here at the bottom of the screen. Man-to-man -man coverage. Okay, he's going to get in a little bit of a trail position. The guy gives him a hitch and go. He gets behind, but he's done the catch-up drill, no panic. Now, he can't, he sees the guy making the pocket before he can touch him, so he can't look back for the ball. He's just got to stay focused on the hands, just punch it away when he gets there. But if you wait for these situations, you might only get two or three of these situations in practice all year. So that's not enough to work on it. You gotta set your drill up so they, they get work on it and then it becomes second nature. Okay, here's the same guy who just did that on the slot man at the top of the screen. Okay, he's gonna get in the same position, doesn't really have a chance to look for the ball, just punches it out. Okay, corner at the top, same situation, Albert Lewis, gets in a little bit of a trail. Now he's in position. Once he gets where he can feel that guy shoulder to shoulder, now he can look for the ball and we'll end up coming up with it. Okay, corner over here on the right, Kevin Ross, same situation. Man to man, he's trailing a little bit. You can see, he, this guy is very focused. He, he knows that he's got to catch up with that receiver first, then Get, once he's in position, he can feel him. Now he can turn and find the ball and end up knocking it away. Okay, here, I don't have my strip drill, but you can see, you'll see how the guys are into it in practice and the coach allows them to in practice. Here, Kevin's got the guy coming across field. He'll end up staying after this and punching it out from underneath. And you gotta work on it, and you gotta, you gotta just really stress it, but these guys, that is, that's the number one way I like to do it. Left corner at the top of the screen covering man to man. He's gonna end up with the same situation. He falls, bounce back up, stay after it, punch it out from underneath. Okay, this is Albert Lewis now, left corner at the bottom of the screen. He's got a little different technique. It's successful for him, but he stays after and he ends up coming over top. Okay, right corner here at the 40 yard line, Kevin Ross. He's gonna miss this one, but I like his technique. Tries to get it out, punching up. Okay, he's the right corner at the top of the screen now. This ball is going to be caught. 
He's going to end up punching it out, staying after it. It's a little bit tough to see, but he uses this technique. He comes with his right hand right here underneath and gets it out. Okay, now left corner at the top, Albert Lewis. Okay, you're going to see the over-the-top technique. I don't particularly like this, but he's very good at it, and he ends up punching it out. But you can see the guys end up using the techniques that they work on in practice. He's motioning in with the motion man here. He's going to get another one out. The same way, and it just, just becomes repetition. Okay, last thing I want to show you, again, I don't have my bull in the ring film, but you can see Donnie Shell, the support man. We looked at a little bit of these. He's going to end up, this is just from about the position you would be in the bull in the ring, about three yards away, attack the lead blocker, get under his shoulder pads, and come off the winner. Okay, same situation. He's coming up, eyeballing the blocker, 250 pound, 280 pound guard, 190 pound defensive back. And the guys, they take pride in that and they can see when you show them something like this where the drill helps them, they can see it and they end up putting a little bit more into it. Same thing, 270 pound, Roy Foster, right guard, 185 pound defensive back. Come off and make the tackle. Okay. Same thing here. Okay. And it's all a matter of leverage. And when they see themselves being successful, they put a little bit more into the drills. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. I enjoyed it. See you guys uh, the rest of the afternoon and evening.